I'm very proud that two of those three times was somebody I know quite well. And You know, during the 1990s, under a Democratic president, we had a flourishing economy, a nation at peace, America's leadership respected around the world. A Democratic president is absolutely essential for America once again to fulfill the purpose of America, to move toward that more perfect union, to make that progress that ensures every generation to come will have the same opportunities and blessings that we have taken for granted. When we think about the lost opportunities and the damage that has been done during the past seven and a half years, on the environment and the economy, on health care and civil rights, on education, foreign policy, and the Supreme Court, imagine how far we could have come had we had a Democrat in the White House. So that little, little history aside is really to make a very serious point. We cannot let this moment slip away. We must affirm our commitment to making sure that we have a Democratic president come next January. And in this town, where when the polls closed, and the ballots were counted. Barack got 107 votes, and I got 107 votes. But both Barack and I know that those votes were not just for us. Each vote cast was a prayer for our nation, a declaration of your dreams for your children, a reflection of your desire to chart a new course for our nation. Each of those votes was truly a vote of confidence in the American dream, a vote for an economy where your hard work is rewarded, an economy that lifts all of our families and ensures that prosperity is shared. Each vote was an affirmation of a fundamental moral principle that in the richest nation on earth, no father should have to choose between health care for himself and his children, and no mother should be stuck in a dead-end job just to keep her family's insurance. Each vote was a commitment to an America defined by deep and meaningful equality. An America where we reach beyond the boundaries of color and creed, gender and geography, and embrace all of our people. Each vote was a reflection of your belief that America can once again lead the world by our values. Values that have shaped the aspirations of tens of millions across the globe, across generations, and has always been the source of our deepest strength. These are the goals we share. These are the ideals we believe in. These are the hopes for our future, and this is the work that we look forward to. The truth is that in this election, we face an opponent with a very different vision of America. Now, Barack and I both have a great deal of respect for Senator McCain and his heroic service to our nation. But in the end, after eight devastating years under President Bush, Senator McCain is simply offering four years more. He sees right-wing judges appointed to the Supreme Court and says, why not a few more? He sees billions of dollars in corporate tax cuts exploding our deficit and says, why not billions more? He sees five long years in Iraq and he's willing to stay for years, even decades more. In the end, Senator McCain and President Bush are like two sides of the same coin and it doesn't amount to a whole lot of change. So here's the choice in this election. 
If you like the direction America is going, then vote for Senator McCain. Because you'll definitely get more of the same. But if you think we need a new course, a new agenda, then vote for Barack Obama and you will get the change that you and we need and deserve. And to anyone who voted for me and is now considering not voting or voting for Senator McCain, I strongly urge you to reconsider. I urge you to remember who we are standing for in this election. We are standing for the single mother with a young daughter juggling school and work who told me I'm doing it all to better myself for her. We're standing for the woman who grabbed my hand and asked me, what are you going to make sure you do? So I have health care and began to cry because even though she works three jobs, she can't afford insurance. We're standing for the young man in the Marine Corps t-shirt who waited months for medical care and said, take care of my buddies. A lot of them are still over there. And then will you please take care of me? We're standing for all of those who lost jobs and health care who can't afford gas or groceries, who felt invisible to this president. And that's why I'm standing with Senator Obama today. Because I know he'll work for you, he'll fight for you, and he'll stand up for you every single day in the White House. Because I know he'll be a leader who invests in our people and helps us seize the promise of new leadership and restored reputation around the world. Because I know he'll be a commander-in-chief who will never hesitate to use force when necessary, but never shrink from using diplomacy whenever possible. I hope you'll join me. I hope you'll stand with me. I hope you'll work as hard for Senator Obama as many of you did for me. You know, a little while back, a woman handed me a photograph of her father as a young soldier. This very young man in his uniform was standing at attention as President Truman presented him the Medal of Honor the highest award that is given for military service. During World War II, he had risked his life on a daring mission to drive back the enemy and protect his fellow soldiers. In the corner of that photo, in shaky handwriting, this brave veteran had written simply to Hillary Clinton, keep fighting for us. So to that American hero and to all of you, I want you to know that's exactly what I'm going to do. That is why I'm standing here with Senator Obama. That is why I will be working hard for his election. That is why I will be fighting to change the direction of this country and once again give it back to the people. It has been the honor and privilege of my life to compete for the presidency of the United States, to meet the people who have invested so much of your time, your money, your heart, your soul into this election, and to know what a great and good country this is. And I believe with all my heart that this election is one of the most important in our nation's history. We've had significant challenges in every generation. And we usually finally summon up the will to address them. So I think Winston Churchill once said, the Americans always get around to doing the right thing after trying nearly everything else. <laughs> the country is ready. Now we need the leadership to make it happen. 
a leader who is a partner to bring about the change and progress that is so yearned for. So think hard about how we will fulfill the promise of this great nation, how we will uphold the ideals we cherish and reclaim the country we love. And the answer for me here is to pledge my support and my hard work and my effort to the next President of the United States, Barack Obama.